because I always had this notion, no goal is unrealistic when you really think about it. What makes it unrealistic is the time frame that you're trying to achieve it by. Someone that wants to lose 60 pounds, if they're that overweight and they have that much weight to lose, then no, that's not an unrealistic goal. They should lose those 60 pounds. It's just the time frame that they set on themselves. Earlier I said lose 60 pounds in six weeks. That's not realistic. Now, you can lose 60 pounds, just not in six weeks. That's gonna take months of dedication and commitment and consistency to achieve. What's up everyone, David here. Got a new video for y'all today. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. Now for today's video, we're gonna gear it more towards the beginner or those who are starting their fitness journey, whether it's be to get stronger, lose weight, look better, build some confidence, or just improve their overall health. Doesn't matter, this video is for y'all that are starting to work out. Now, you may want to start work out, but you haven't. Now, what exactly is the reason why you haven't started working out? In reality, in my opinion at least, I think there's two questions that I need to be asked. Are you not starting to work out because you just don't know where to start? You know, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of machines, a lot of different training styles, which one's best for you, things like that, you just don't know where to start? Or are you not starting because you're scared of being new, being judged, it's a new environment, you're starting something new, is, it, is that, is the fear getting to you? Ask yourself those two questions, figure out what the root cause is on why you're not starting to work out. Now, let's break it down a little bit. For those who are not starting because they just don't know where to, I understand, there's a lot of exercises. Should I use machines? Should I use free weights? How many sets and reps? How long should I wait? Should it be 45 seconds of rest in between sets? Should it be one minute of rest in between sets? Should I work out three days out of the week? Should I work out four days out of the week? Should I do two days on, one day off, or three days on, one day off? And should I be alternating the days? There's just so much to take into account when you're working out. At least that's what you may think. But on the other hand, if you're scared to work out, if you're a little bit overweight, do you feel that people will make fun of you for being overweight if you're going in the gym? Do you think that you don't know any of the exercises, therefore your form's gonna be incorrect? Do you feel like you're gonna be criticized if people see you, you know, not lifting correctly? Do you, are you scared of asking questions? Do you feel intimidated that you don't look as fit as maybe some of the other people that are in the gym? Or do you feel intimidated that maybe you're not as skinny as the other people in the gym? You know, there's so many things that go into maybe why you're not working out, whether it be a physical reason, emotional reason, things like that. But ultimately, let's try to break it down so at least we could try to guide you so you can actually start instead of just holding off even further. For those who are not starting to work out because they're scared of being judged, because again, it's a new environment, they're new to the gym, they just don't know what they're doing. I'm here to tell you right now, don't be scared. All right, just get into it, just start. If you're scared of being judged, honestly, no one cares what you're doing in the gym. If we're in a gym or anywhere where you're working out, we're all there with the common goal of trying to improve ourselves. No one goes to the gym to get worse. All right, that should be a given, that should be obvious. We're all there because we're trying to improve our current condition. Now, we may have different areas that we're trying to improve. Some people are trying to improve their looks. Some people are trying to improve their confidence. Some people are trying to improve their strength. Some people are just trying to improve their overall health. Doesn't matter what the reason is, regardless it is, we're all there for positive reasons. No one's there with negative intentions. So if you're scared of going there for being judged, I'm here to tell you, no one cares. Just the fact that you're in there already says a lot that you're actually trying to make an effort to change. So good job on you for that one. Now, moving on to those that are not working out because they just don't know where to start, man, just get started, all right? You're gonna learn a lot about yourself as you go. Sometimes you just gotta jump off the cliff and learn how to fly on the way down. You may not know whether you should work out three days a week or four days a week. Well, there's one way to find out. Start working out three days a week. If you're not making progress as fast and you can hold up another day, okay, start working out four days a week. Should you know if you should rest 45 seconds versus one minute? Okay, one way to find out. Do a set, wait 45 seconds. If you're not ready and you're still out of breath, Okay, wait for a minute. You know, just actually do it and find out as you go. It's not like everything is set in stone. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Everyone's body is uh, different physiologically. So just try out and see what works best for you. Now, again, that's just a general overview of the tips that I can give you on how to start working out. It's as simple as just getting in there, getting started. Whether you're holding off for psychological reasons, like you feel everyone's gonna be judging you, get over it. 
Everyone's there to help out. If you're that scared, you're unclear, just ask questions. If you're there because you don't know what to do or you're not working out because you don't know what to do, we'll start doing something and figure out if that's what's for you. All right, how do you know if you're gonna like something if you never actually try it? Now, again, that's just a very broad overview. Now, if we're gonna go down into the specifics, this is what I can offer you, Smarkles. S-M-A-R-T. The S stands for specific. The M stands for measurable. The A stands for achievable. The R stands for either it's relative or realistic. And the T stands for time. Now these, if you can answer all those, will save you a lot of headache and it will make it a little bit clear on what path you should go down when it comes to figuring out what am I supposed to be doing at the gym or when I'm working out. Now, Whatever goal it is that you have, you wanna make it as specific as possible. If your goal is to lose weight, don't just say you wanna lose weight. Say how much specifically you wanna be losing weight. Again, that's what the S stands for, specific. Details are what matter here. I don't wanna just lose weight. I wanna lose five pounds of body fat. I don't wanna just get stronger. I want to increase my bench press by 15 pounds. Again, the little things matter here. It's all about details. The more details you can put into this, the more you can then later on use when it actually comes to programming your actual exercises. Because like I said, if you're saying, I just want to get stronger in my squat, okay, how is that going to carry over to what workouts you should be doing? If your goal is to build up your squat, but you're doing a bunch of you know leg curls, Okay, that's a leg workout, but will it actually have that much carryover squat? No, that's why it's specific. My goal is to build up my squat by 15 pounds. How are we gonna do that? You gotta work the quads, you gotta work the glutes, you know, things like that. The muscle groups that are more directly associated as being the prime movers for that muscle group or for that movement. So like I said, specific. Be as specific as possible when it comes to whatever your goal is. Now, M, measurable. How exactly are you going to measure this goal? And not, so, not exactly how you're gonna measure it, but also how often are you gonna measure it? This goes hand in hand with, again, how often should I work out? Well, if you're gonna measure your goal every month, well, now you know, you gotta set up a four month program, see what worked. And if that didn't work and you were working out three days a week, you didn't meet your weight loss goal. Okay, for these next months, now I'm gonna work out four days out of the week to make me make a little bit quicker progress. Measurable, how are you gonna measure it? If your goal is to lose weight, you don't always have to be with the scale. You could just measure it by how loose your clothes fit. If you know, you're a little on the heavier side and it fits you a little tight around the midsection right here, okay, a good way I'm gonna measure if I'm losing weight is if I use that same shirt that fits me tight, but every week it's starting to feel a little bit looser and looser, okay, that shows I'm losing size from this area. If your goal is to gain weight or gain muscle, all right, same thing, measure how your clothes feel. All right, is my shirt starting to feel a little bit tighter? around the shoulders, the arms, the chest area. If it is, that shows you're building a muscle in that area. If your goal is to lose weight, again, if you wanna use a scale, that's perfectly fine. If your goal is just to be healthier, okay, what are other ways you can measure how you're gonna be healthier? Well, I used to get out of breath when I was climbing up the stairs to go to work, okay? Now I can climb up these flight of stairs and I don't feel as out of breath. That shows progress, okay? Now we're moving on to the A. Is it achievable? It's a simple yes or no question. Is what you're saying, really doable or is it not? Let's just say you already weigh 150 pounds and your goal, and let's just say you're a female and your goal is to lose 50 pounds. Well, that's a pretty big size difference. Is it realistic? And again, that leads on, on to realistic, achievable and realistic. The A and the R go hand in hand. If you're a 150 pound female and you're trying to get down to hundred pounds, that's a that's one third of your body weight. Is that really realistic for how big you really are? For males, it might be because you know we're typically a little bit bigger, have a little bit more size. We could risk losing more weight. We gotta think about what exactly is that weight consisting of? Are we losing body fat or are we losing muscle mass along with it? So just think about these things. If your goal is to lose 60 pounds, but then you set it as a goal for in six weeks, that's not realistic. All right, just to be honest, one to two pounds is realistic of just losing pure body fat amongst most people. Some people might make a little bit more progress than that. Some people might make a little bit less. It's gonna vary from person to person. But on average, I say one to two pounds of body fat per week is airing on the safer side. And even going more in the safer side, I would say one pound per week. Because if you don't want to lose it too fast, because then there's the risk of you know gaining it all back. You want something that's realistic with you. Okay. And lastly, time. Now, I said the A and the R are related, but even more so than the A and R being close together, the achievable and realistic. 
are the realistic and the time. Because I always had this notion, no goal is unrealistic when you really think about it. What makes it unrealistic is the time frame that you're trying to achieve it by. Someone that wants to lose 60 pounds, if they're that overweight and they have that much weight to lose, then no, that's not an unrealistic goal. They should lose those 60 pounds. It's just the time frame that they set on themselves. Earlier I said lose 60 pounds in six weeks. That's not realistic. Now, you can lose 60 pounds, just not in six weeks. That's gonna take months of dedication and commitment and consistency to achieve. So again, the SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic slash relevant and time if you can answer all of those and fill in as much detail to what your goal is then that's going to make it so much clearer on how you should start working out if you were able to answer all of that now let's just say the goal is to build up your bench press and you're able to answer all that all right how do i start working out well I said I want to build up my bench press. That involves these muscle groups. Okay, I want to be able to do this on this day, this on that day. I said I want to try to do it in four weeks. Okay, how often should I work out? Well, for sure, I got to stay committed now for the four weeks. How many days? Okay, I'm going to work out three days instead of just previous two days. Now, if by the end of that month, you haven't met your bench press goal, okay, I was working out three days per week. I, my body was holding up fine, but I didn't meet my goal. Okay, now you know for the following month, bump it up. Maybe add in an extra day. You see, if you can answer these questions, it carry over to actually having a planned structure when it comes to working out. So that way you won't have the excuse anymore of where to start because that goal laid a pretty solid foundation of where you should start. Again, just because we haven't talked about it in a while, if you're scared of being judged, this could also apply. Now that you know what it is that you want to achieve maybe you have a little bit more confidence going to the gym because now you know you're in there with a plan you know what you have to do you maybe you won't be judged as much because you're not just wandering around or figuring out what to do what machine to go to first no you have a goal you know what to do go execute it's as simple as that at the end of the day though just get started don't care what other people do you're doing this for you you're not doing it for them just get in there put some work in and you'll be amazed at what you figure out. Again, you're just gonna figure it out as you go. I've been working out for years and I'm still learning things about my body. Things that I used to do as my workouts don't work for me anymore. And now I'm doing new exercises or new workout programs and I'm now I'm seeing more results. Again, because I'm constantly learning new things about myself. I'm constantly going, not stopping. And you just gotta be willing to change on the spot. All right, don't overcomplicate it. Just get in there, get started. Don't care about what other people think. Comment down below any other tips you have, like for example, when you first started working out and what were some things that helped you. Let's try to help each other out. Make sure you comment down any other video suggestions you wanna see me do. Make sure you follow me not just on this channel, but my girlfriend's channel and then our couple's channel. And then for Instagram and TikTok, same thing. Make sure you follow me on my accounts, my girlfriend's couples. I put all the links down in the description below. With that being said, I'll catch y'all next time.